another serving of freshly brewed buzz straight from the heart of entertainment. The music, the movies, the celebrities and more. So grab your drinks and munchies a little closer because it's that time. Hi there, I'm Francesca Mascarenes and you're tuning in to your weekly fill of entertainment on Unscripted. On the show this week, I'm chatting with actor and now director Konkana Sen Sharma about her directorial debut, A Death in the Ganj, joined by one of the film's lead actors, Kalki Kekla. New stars given out on the Hollywood Boulevard, maybe somewhere between Cher and James Dean, and trends that are keeping the fashion boulevards brighter. Let's take you straight there. Talk about having your own bright star on the Hollywood Boulevard? Well, Kerry Russell just got hers. The Hollywood Walk of Fame, Kerry Russell. I guess I mostly want to say, other than what an incredible honor this is, um, you know, when I was younger, uh, I think I was seven or eight, one of the very first um, video cameras I ever saw that recorded, you know, picture was a friend of my grandparents and he had this video camera and he sat all the kids down, my brother and my sister, and he wanted to do like a little interview with all of us and he sat us down and said um, state your name, age and what you want to be when you grow up and he had said to me do you want to be an actress and re-watching the video years later I say no I don't um, and I said I want to what I want to do is travel around the world and take pictures and um, I feel like that's what I get to do uh, in some way I get to travel the world and see these things I have never seen and meet incredible people and live this wild adventure that this career affords and I'm very thankful for it. Kerry Russell becomes the 2613th celebrity to get her own star on the Walk of Fame that runs 1.3 miles east to west on the Hollywood Boulevard, joining icons like Steven Spielberg, Audrey Hepburn and Frank Sinatra. Kerry, who was the voice behind 2009's animated action Wonder Woman, got her star just days before the release of its 2017 fantasy adventure remake starring Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman. On hand for the star unveiling was J.J. Abrams, co-creator of Russell's claim to fame TV drama Felicity. This is getting attention like this despite being a member of the Screen Actors Guild. Uh, getting attention is not her strong suit. What she does so beautifully is become other people and she does it in a way that most actors would only uh, dream of being able to do. And I know it's true for uh, the other people who are here today who worked on Felicity including Scott Speedman, Amanda Foreman, Matt and myself. We, uh, we just were in uh, a state of awe really uh, of what Carrie was capable of. And, and she wouldn't just make you cry when you would watch the show, you'd watch dailies and she'd make you cry. And also present were Felicity's male lead, Scott Speedman, and Russell's real-life partner and co-star from The American, Matthew Reed. The two play KGB officers posing as US citizens in the 1980s in the still-running American period spy drama, The Americans. Russell first appeared on TV in the all-new Mickey Mouse Club on the Disney Channel back in the 90s, alongside Justin Timberlake, Britney Spears, and Christina Aguilera. Her film credits include Waitress and Mission Impossible 3. Priyanka Chopra is making headlines for the two most contradictory reasons. While she got celebrated for receiving the prestigious Dada Sahib Palke Award, she also got trolled for apparently disrespecting Prime Minister Narendra Modi by wearing a dress to meet him. Unapologetic as PC is, she redeemed herself in the sassiest way by retorting to trolls with a post on Instagram captioned legs for days from a night out with her mother in Berlin. In a new category introduced by the Dada Sahib Palke Academy, Priyanka has been honoured as an internationally acclaimed actress. PC's Hollywood debut film Baywatch is out in theatres and the two-time People's Choice Award winner plays FBI agent Alex Parrish on the American TV drama thriller Quantico that's on for its third season soon. The music industry is standing up strong and speaking out loud against acts of terror. 
Just days after the horrific bombing at the Manchester Arena, Ariana Grande is returning to England's Old Trafford to play a Benefit for the Victims concert. Artists Justin Bieber, Katy Perry, Miley Cyrus, Usher and more unite voices to perform the One Love Manchester Benefit concert. All proceeds from the tickets will go to the We Love Manchester Emergency Fund and concert goers who were present at the Manchester Arena will get free tickets to the Benefit concert. Manchester's hometown heroes, Oasis, sang Today is going to be the day that they're going to throw it back to you back in 95 and today Manchester is rising with the same spirit in the aftermath of these deadly attacks. We're going to take a short break on the show right now and when we come back, Aaron's walking you through Fashion Boulevard and I've got an exclusive chat with Indian actor turned director Konkana Sen Sharma and Kalki Kekla. So don't go anywhere. Welcome back, you're watching Unscripted with me Francesca on We On. It's time now to take you from Hollywood Boulevard to the streets of India that photographers and everyday fashion trends are painting like their own canvas. Over to you Aaron, strut them through those streets. Hello everyone, I am Aaron Lingdo and this week we're covering street style. Well, it's not as cliche as you think it is because they would involve a lot of things before you step out of the house. Let's talk about firstly the weather and the occasion. But if you have to ask me personally, it's top priority and that is comfort because let me tell you one thing, well there's never a dull moment in fashion. To help me on this mission, I invited somebody who knows a thing or two about street style. His blog Ish Stylista documents street fashion behind the scenes of fashion weeks and Indian popular culture. His work has been published in several national and international digital and print publications. Presenting style blogger and photographer Abhimanyu Singh Rathor. Abhimanyu, first of all, thank you so much for your time. I've been interviewing a lot of people. Let me hear it from you. So tell me a few of the things that I should envy about your job. It's, a, it's like the most exciting part is meeting new people every time. Yeah. So having the interaction and like spotting the cool trends. So as the legendary photographer Bill Cunningham said that the real fashion is on the streets and will always be on the streets. So let's talk about trends. What do you think are the latest street style trends that are doing the rounds right now? See, the, this time it's all about the 70s and the 80s have come back together, like a mix of 70s and 80s, so it's more print on print, more colours on the street and also a kind of over the top couture. So what are the challenges that you face, a little bit of the disadvantages that you face probably? So basically I face uh, challenges regarding the lights also because yeah. it's difficult to shoot in the harsh summer yeah. light in New yeah. Delhi yeah. and also at the fashion weeks most of the time you need a clean backdrop to see the silhouette properly, the colours properly so it's kind of difficult because there are so many people running around. So how is street style seen in India in particular? You know, I mean the concept here, I don't know if a lot of people are aware of it but what do you think from your perspective? It's actually... Um, now it's 2017, a lot of people are now involved into street style, a lot of companies have their marketing campaigns based out of street style. Yeah. So yeah, it's a good era yeah. to start with. Yeah. Perfect, Abhimani, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. For years, music has been known to bring people together. 
Concerts are places that unite a myriad people from different walks of life with a few words, beats and rhythms. Now to take a place like that and turn it into a place of terror and chaos is nothing short of cowardly. And as in life we fight back the currents of our challengers, art in its imitation of life finds ways to fight back like never before. In the wake of the recent Manchester bombing, the music industry united in one voice to challenge back its perpetrators. On May 22nd, music lovers and American singer Ariana Grande's fans stood witness to a deadly terror bombing at the Manchester Arena in England. The bombing took place soon after Ariana Grande's concert, part of her world tour to support her third studio album Dangerous Woman ended, throwing the entire world into a state of shock, including the global music industry. Musicians sent out their thoughts and prayers to Ariana Grande and the victims, survivors and their families via Twitter, some even dedicating their performances to the tragedy. In the morning rain, as the salt sheds in the bone. I'd like to dedicate this song to my good friend Ariana Grande and everyone who experienced that horrific attack yesterday. Our hearts are with you. The next few days saw many concert dates across England getting cancelled, including Grande's following performances at London's O2 Arena. But community that lies at the heart of music didn't succumb to the fears of terror and came back stronger. Manchester locals who followed a minute of silence in honour of the victims at St Anne's Square united in one voice to sing Don't Look Back in Anger by hometown heroes Oasis. Soon after, in an official statement released via Twitter, Ariana Grande announced a benefit concert for the victims of the tragedy, saying, I quote, Our response to this violence must be to come closer together, to help each other, to love more, to sing louder and to live more kindly and generously than we did before. The One Love Manchester Benefit Concert will be held at the Old Trafford Stadium on June 4th. All proceeds from the tickets will go to the We Love Manchester Emergency Fund, which has been set up by the City Council in conjunction with the British Red Cross. Many musicians including Justin Bieber, Katy Perry, Miley Cyrus, Usher, Pharrell Williams and Niall Horan have joined hands with Grande to headline the concert. Grande will also offer free tickets to fans who were present at her Manchester Arena show on May 2nd. No week is complete without new movie releases and that's exactly what's coming up right after this very short break. And Konkana Sen Sharma and Kalki Kekla are talking about their film A Death in the Ganj in an exclusive interview, so stay tuned. Tuning back into Unscripted on We On. I'm driving you down to the theatres now for a bunch of what seems to be some really great films. It's going to be a good week at the movies, so go check out the latest movie releases. And I've also got you an exclusive conversation with two leading ladies in Bollywood, Konkana Sen Sharma and Kalki Kekla, chatting about their latest film, A Death in the Ganj. Take a look. Remember the 90s when you and all your buddies would hide in a room, switch on the television and secretly watch what you were forbidden to, they watch. Welcome to Baywatch. Our team is well, it's time to hit up your friends and revive old memories as the much anticipated millennial version of Baywatch has finally hit the theatres. The American action comedy directed by Seth Gordon stars Dwayne Johnson, Zac Efron, Priyanka Chopra and Alexandra Didario among others. Why does she always look like she's running in slow-mo? She's the reason I believe in God. Oh. Will the film live up to its hype and the Baywatchers' mission to protect the beaches and bay from criminal threat? 
Find out in theaters near you. Why are we in the morgue? You gotta get some hard evidence. Someone's coming. What do we do now? Now we hide. Weird. I'm Diana of Themyscira. Welcome to the DC Extended Universe. This time, the Warner Brothers bring your favorite DC character. What if the mirror you see every day starts to haunt you? Get set for Praval Raman's horror drama Dobara, where a mirror creates havoc in the lives of a brother and sister. I am Natasha Merchant and my brother is Alex Merchant. And I want to prove this today. Jennifer Connor and Philip Lasser. Philip Lasser. For centuries they have been murders. And they are responsible for everyone's death. Because they are responsible for Officially adapted from the American supernatural thriller Oculus, the film stars the real-life sibling duo of Huma Qureshi and Saqib Saleem. Fever Kids. Natasha, why don't you accept it? Dad was a mad, violent and a sick man. I have never seen Alex before. It's time to take your little ones back to the fantastical land of mythology as Hanuman is back. The 2017 animated adventure film, voiced by none other than the Bollywood superstar Salman Khan, has been produced by Rat Films. Valmiki ji, suna nahi aapne. Jo dar gaya. <laughs> for all those of you who are big on Salman, you are totally in for a surprise. Hanuman the Damdar in cinemas near you. Jai Shri Ram! Mera naam Ded hai. Main tumse Magic, Moments and Maya. Get ready to fall in love with Manisha Khoirala all over again as she returns as Maya. Agar Maya Devi ko... किसी लड़के से लव लेटर मिले और उस लेटर में लिखा हो डियर माया आई लव यू मतलब स्टूपेड हम लेटर्स लिखेंगे डायरेक्टेड बाय सुनैना भटनागर द फिल्म डियर माया रिवॉल्व्स अराउंड हाई स्कूल गर्ल्स ईरा एंड एना and how they prank a local woman by sending her letters posing as her secret admirer दुनिया का हर सुंदर चमत्कार तुम्हारी याद दिलाता है Things take a serious turn when Maya goes missing. आप इन्हें जानती हैं? माया देवी नाम है। कब गायब हुई थी? छह साल पहले। After impressing the audiences and critics with offbeat performances in films like Page Three and Lipstick Under My Burqa, actor Konkana Sen Sharma is all set for her directorial debut, A Death in the Gunge. Huh? What are we calling this one? Fluffy. And who's going to look after Fluffy when we go back? Shuntu. <laughs> the film stars an ensemble cast of Kalki Kekla, Om Puri, Vikrant Masi, and Ranveer Shore, among others. This drama revolves around the twisty tale of an uneventful family holiday, which takes a thrilling turn, resulting into an unavoidable event. Well, we don't want to spill any more secrets here because we have an exclusive surprise for our viewers. We all know and love Konkana Sen Sharma in front of the camera. But how many of you have been waiting to see her in the director's seat? Well, I know I have and the wait is finally over. Konkana's directorial debut, A Death in the Gunge, is a story which is very close to her heart because it is one that her father told her. I'd like to welcome not just actor but writer and director Konkana Sen Sharma and Kalki Kekla who's no stranger to our show and also plays one of the lead characters in Konkana's film. Thanks so much for joining me. Thank you. It's very intimidating sitting with the both of you because I've always been so in awe of your body of work and you'll just keep pulling out all the stops. Well, first of all, congratulations on this venture of thank yours. Thank you, thank you. You've and been very kind. I know you've been toying with the idea of making this film for a while. So what finally, you know, made you decide, okay, Push now it's, yeah, it's going to happen now. 
And how has the transition been from acting to directing? You know, I didn't actually want to direct or anything. It's not like I had a plan and I was going to make a film and I had to direct a movie. So I didn't want to do that at all. But it is a, f a story that I'm familiar with because it's a story that I heard, I think, first when I was eight or nine years old. And, uh, you know, it's, it's because my parents used to have a house in McCluskey Ganj in Bihar, what was then Bihar. And my film is set in 1979 in McCluskey Ganj. So my parents used to have a house there, my grandparents used to live there, they used to go on family vacations. I was too small to really participate properly, so I felt very left out. And one has heard so many stories from that time, family anecdotes, etc. And some, most of those stories were funny, but some of them, because of the kind of place it was, very remote, far away, tucked away, isolated, etc. Some of those stories had a more spooky kind of a feeling or something more chilling about it. So this was one of those stories. So how was it working on set with uh, Konkana in a new role as the director? I don't know what she thinks of me, <laughs> but... Uh, it's been amazing. <laughs> but yeah, we, you know, um, she had a very clear idea of what she wanted and we did workshops before we started. We had like very specific look tests with makeup. We, they, they cut a fringe, you know, for, for the look of the 1970s. Uh, so there was, yeah, there was a lot of stuff. She taught me a little bit of Bengali. Uh, she went through all my lines, uh, she went through all my lines just so that I would try and get a little bit of that accent. And uh, Kongana, how for you personally, how was this experience as compared to acting? I know you've acted in like more than 40 films and this was your first film as a director. Feature, so was it yeah. a little <clears throat> like more or less satisfying? How would you compare it? You know, the, uh, you're so much more involved, I think, when you're, you know, writing and directing. You're so involved with the whole process because, uh, you know, in, in if there's like 24 hours in a day, the, like acting is like, you know, two hours. Yeah. But the direction part of it is like feels like I don't know 48 hours <laughs> a little bit so it's so the kind of experience is also very different the depth of that experience the range of experiences that you have it's so different I actually think that more than anything else I think motherhood really prepped me for this because the kind of resilience yeah. and the patience that you have to develop I think that stood me in great stead so the latest trend that we've noticed is that a lot of smaller in independent films are taking the international film festival route so even with uh, Death in the Ganj, I think minutes after it was ready, it went to the Toronto International Film Festival. So why do you think filmmakers are taking this path? Is it because Indian audiences are not that receptive or is it just like a marketing strategy that to help sell a film? I think you always want to get your film as uh, to go as far and wide as possible, yeah. you know. It's not that you are limiting yourself or saying that this is the kind of market it needs. And I feel this film is particularly universal, it's a topic that a lot of people can relate to. Yeah, and also I think uh, just to add to that, that sometimes, you know, it's difficult to release uh, the, uh, you know, because this is a small film. It's, I wouldn't say it's uh, like, it's slightly unconventional. It's not, you know, uh, uh, you know, I guess very typically mainstream uh, like that. So these are difficult to release because, you know, distributors will give you like one show at 11 or <laughs> something or, so these films are difficult to release. They, these films often have limited resources and therefore we cannot spend as much on publicity. Uh, PNA etc. So often festivals will provide a certain, you know, like uh, you write up on it or if you happen to win an award or something, you know, it helps us to kind of reach out um, to a wider audience. So I have a few quick questions to help our viewers get to know you all better. Uh, what kind of films do you all like watching? I actually like watching a lot of cheesy rom-coms, <laughs> like the things that come to my mind are like Pretty Woman and <laughs> When Harry Met Sally. I like, uh, you know, indie dramas most. I like, I like intimate little stories about like people and behavior, things like that. Okay, with the arrival of Netflix, everyone seems to be hooked on to some series or the other. Are you all watching anything at the moment? Yeah, what did I watch? I'm watching Love right now. I just finished watching Big Little Lies which I loved because it's like a seven part, it's only seven episodes. From your body of work, what was the most challenging role that you all have played to date? The obvious one is Margarita just because it was so removed from who I am. You know, it's very hard for me to learn dialects and accents, you know. So this, both Mr. and Mrs. Ayer and Omkara, I had to learn. Which is, I mean, because then you can't really like improvise and things like that. So that I find tough. What have you all had to give up to get to where you all are today? A lot of food. Yeah. No, I'm joking. I'm just joking. <laughs> um, give up? I don't know actually. Like, time is is, is precious, and we're constantly giving our time away yes. for all sorts of stuff. 
my last question so where would you all rather be right now <laughs> sleeping in, in my bed. hotel room <laughs> yeah curled up in my duvet we've just had lunch and now and we're feeling be, yeah. sleepy we've been a uh, long day so yeah in ready bed, to go relax yes okay that was an exclusive conversation with two powerful women in bollywood konkana sen sharma and kalki kekla and that brings us to the end of another episode of unscripted i hope you got your fill of entertainment for the week We'd love to hear from you, so continue to tweet to us at weon underscore unscripted. I'll be here at the same time next week on Weon. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Francesca. See ya.